entire one. Uh, we are starting a webinar, if you don't mind. And there are two of us today, myself, Sergei Kirpetian, specialist for international cooperation at the Annapolis University, and my dear colleague, Olga Zaplatina, who is admission manager at, at the university, and basically she deals with all international applications at the university. And we are to, to give you a webinar. So uh, it will consist of two parts. The, in the first part, we will give you a brief presentation of the university, uh, which will consist of a uh, description of our educational programs, uh, grant opportunities and also admission procedure and in the second part well it will be a general Q&A session so basically we'll have chances to ask us some questions on Nepal's University. So uh, before moving to and starting our webinar may I please ask whether everything is fine with sound. If, if, if during the webinar you experiencing any problems with sound just let us know in the chat box so we will try to to fix problems as soon as possible. Um, so if, if everything seems fine so far, I think uh, we are starting. So uh, what is Nepal's university today? Uh, we are an extremely young uh, private university founded in 2012 and we are focused on IT. But even within IT, we have four uh, main areas. You can see them in the blue box, which are big data, artificial intelligence, and robotics, software engineering, and information security. And this is our four main areas. And uh, as you can see, we mainly focused on soft part of the IT rather than hard part. And uh, giving you some statistics, statistics on Naples University, we currently have um, 556 students, which actually is uh, double more than two years ago. So we are growing quite substantially for five years uh, old university. And um, we try to be as much possible, uh, as, as possible uh, integrated in international environment. And we currently have 32 uh, academic partners worldwide. And at the same time, uh, we rely strongly on cooperation in, or with industry. Being a private university, that is actually the only way for us to survive. That's why we have around uh, 100 IT companies as our partners currently. And um, uh, and actually, we also try to be extensively uh, integrated in research grants, and we so far won uh, 34 uh, research grants. And uh, the last statistic I would like to give uh, is that we have 81 faculty member currently. All programs are taught in English at Annapolis University. That means that you don't need to learn uh, Russian or maybe even Tatar to, to come and start uh, study here. Uh, so only uh, English knowledge is required. Uh, giving you some uh, glimpse on our admission campaign of last year, of 2017, we admitted uh, 255 students last year. But uh, for you, probably the most interesting part of the slide would be uh, the, right, uh, the right one, where you can see our uh, foreign applications. And as you can see, the geography was quite wide uh, from uh, different regions from all over the world, uh, starting from Latin America to Far East and Asia. So we are actually welcoming, welcoming uh, applicants from all over the world. And uh, we are uh, quite keen to have diversity on our campus and among our, our, our students. Uh, but I think about the admission procedure, my, my colleague Olga will tell you uh, a bit more more slightly later and uh, now we are moving on uh, to my favorite slide uh, which is international cooperation that's basically what I do at the university and um, uh, again you can see the geography is quite wide and uh, we don't have any internal uh, limitations in cooperation you can find uh, the universities from all over the world but at the same time we also have quite versatile modes of cooperation and as for potential students of Annapolis University probably the most interesting part for you would be uh, our exchange program we currently have 17 exchange partners uh, that basically means that all our students including international uh, students can uh, um, can participate in this, can spend one semester abroad. And we all, uh, also started this year our participation in Erasmus Plus scheme. Uh, we had our first Erasmus Plus, Erasmus Plus grant with Middle East Technical University. And we try to, and we will try further to extend this, uh, this scheme and cover uh, more and more uh, exchange students with funding. 
Our faculty members, as you can see, the majority of them are foreigners. And together with the fact that all our programs are taught in English, uh, that helps us to create a unique international environment on campus. And the geography, again, is truly wide. And you can find professors from all over the world, starting from, I don't know, Canada and Colombia to Pakistan, Korea, etc. And uh, all of them uh, previously have had experience working either in uh, top IT industry or uh, top computer science schools from all over the world. And for instance, uh, our dean John Carlos Succi, uh, he's Italian, and uh, he used to have, uh, I mean, he's having a, still, <laughs> he still does have a huge industrial experience. And for instance, he used to work in a uh, Ferrari F1 team, and basically he was developing soft for them. Uh, just a brief slide about, about our decision-making body. So basically we have a board of trustees as a main decision body. They determine our main strategy and our main directions and leads us uh, through our young life. And you can find uh, several um, uh, governmental officials here and also several leading uh, heads of leading companies. But the head of um, head of our board of trustees is the current minister of telecom and mass communication of the Russian Federation is Nikolai Nikiforov. And he's actually also initiator and founding father of the whole uh, Inapolis project, not just the university. Uh, this slide would be quite interesting, and I think especially for potential master students, our uh, scientific uh, and research units at the university, we currently have 13 laboratories and seven research centers. And as you can guess, they're all focused on IT, but we also try to be engaged in different interdisciplinary areas. And uh, we try to urge our laboratories to work in these directions. And uh, how it could be interesting for our potential students. Basically, all our students, they have obligatory uh, research applications or industrial applications. So basically they can spend, um, uh, spend time uh, during summer at labs doing research uh, and research internships but also we try to urge our students to participate in the work uh, of labs during the year so basically you can just randomly come to any of our labs and you know indicate your uh, your interest in their work uh, say if you like robotics you can come to our robotics center or uh, robotic uh, robotics lab and uh, be engaged in their work and they are quite welcoming students Our academic and research venue, as you can guess, being a young university, <laughs> we have a lot of brand new facilities. And on the on the photo, you can see our um, our venues, and uh, this is basically our university building. Um, um, we moved here in 2015 and uh, basically has anything uh, you might potentially need, starting from different lecture rooms, uh, three stages of library, uh, and it works 24 seven, so we don't have any limitation in access and styling and doing projects with your friends or research. Um, and the same goes for our uh, residential venue. We have currently four uh, dormitories with a capacity of a thousand uh, people living there. And um, basically we have two main options. And again, they are brand new. They were finished in 2015. So they're quite, quite new. And we have two uh, options for uh, four students, which is a shared suite for two and shared suite for five. And you can choose one of them. And we guarantee to our international students a placement at the dormitory. And basically, students also have a bathroom and uh, a kitchen. And you can choose what you, you know, prefer to maybe to cook by yourself. Or you can also uh, prefer uh, one of two canteens that's situated in the residence. Uh, and also, we have one canteen at the university building, too. Another advantage of studying at Nepal University is uh, free access to all our sport facilities. Uh, basically, uh, we have uh, completely uh, different uh, facilities that you can probably think of, starting from swimming pool to the gym to the, I don't know, uh, football pitch, volleyball field, uh, 
tennis courts, etc. And at the same time, uh, during the winter, we also have winter facilities like hockey rings, uh, equipment for skiing. And we have like in five minutes near Naples a ski resort, uh, a quite big one. So we can uh, practice even this uh, while living in Naples. Um, if you eventually decide to study in Naples University, uh, you can also uh, you should also probably consider the fact that it is situated in the Republic of Tatarstan, which is probably one of the most fastly developing um, uh, regions in Russia, and um, it, it has a population of 3.8 million people currently, and. Um, uh, also, it's quite near Kazan. Of course, near in Russian scale, it's just uh, 800 kilometers east uh, of Moscow, and there is no problems in connection between the cities. And the capital of the of the of the region is uh, is Kazan, which is uh, which has a population of 1.1 1 uh, million people, and basically has anything you might need, uh, as a, any uh, as any big city uh, generally has. And it's also growing quite fast, and um, it's considered to be the first Russian capital after St. Petersburg and Moscow. And to prove that, um, uh, to prove that, some uh, truly major sport events being conducted here uh, during the last few years. For instance, uh, 2013 Summer University and 2017 FIFA Confederation Cup. And next year we have also uh, FIFA World Cup in Kazan. And I think uh, at least quarterfinals will be conducted here in Kazan. So it's a, it's a nice city to live. But Annapolis is also a nice city in sense of uh, living conditions and uh, and this kind of things. For instance, dormitories that I already mentioned, they are, uh, they are extremely cheap and you'll pay around uh, $35 uh, dollars per, uh, per, per place, which is, uh, I can hardly think that you can find anything like that in, in, in Kazan or well, it's Moscow, uh, and um, dormitories are brand new. And in sense of food, basically, it's also quite cheap to, to live in 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 in, uh, in Russia generally, uh, in comparison, especially to maybe Europe and some other uh, regions. And here in Naples, you have basically everything, starting from restaurant, bar, delivery services, etc. And as for leisure, uh, we currently have over 40 uh, clubs and societies at the university, and also, as I mentioned, sport facilities and uh, some other uh, organizations and societies. Uh, but you, you can also consider that we are situated uh, near Kazan, and Kazan basically has everything from uh, huge malls to uh, different, uh, I don't know, theaters, bars, restaurants, operas, whatever you might need in, well, if you want it. And there is a free shuttle running between the cities, so there is, again, no, no connectional problems, you know, to, to get uh, from, uh, from one city to another. So, uh, to, to finish my part, uh, before giving up to Olga, who will tell you, uh, I see that you already writing some questions about applications, uh, procedure, etc. Now I, I'm just giving my last slide to sum up what I said, and then I'm giving to Olga. She will, in details, tell you about all our programs, uh, all conditions and requirements, uh, scholarships, and the procedures and deadlines, of course. And, um, uh, before before giving up to Olga, four points I would like to stress is uh, what we offer. The first key point is international environment. Uh, I mentioned several things like uh, faculty members, the majority of them are foreigners. Then all programs are taught in English. And uh, I think we have quite substantial number of international students in comparison with state universities too. And at the same time, we're majorly involved in uh, international uh, cooperation, uh, doing different uh, joint projects, uh, international exchange, Erasmus Plus, and eventually, uh, eventually it creates a special international environment here and gives uh, students special international, uh, well, basically projects and uh, issues that they can participate in and uh, quite interesting experience. Then high quality education. Uh, I mean, the majority of universities claim to have quite high quality in uh, sense of education, but in our sense, we justify it with the fact that all our faculty members, uh, we have a so-called requirement that all of them uh, must have some kind of affiliation with top uh, 100 computer science schools from all over the world. And what does it mean? That they either work there or they studied there or at least they have to have some kind of training in these top 100 computer science schools from all over the world. And uh, another key point is comfortable living conditions. 
and uh, I already mentioned it a few slides ago, but apart from the university, we also have a special economic zone uh, with a uh, with technical technological park as a center of it, where over 60 uh, over 60 IT companies are situated. That means that we don't not only have a unique academic and international environment, but also professional in sense of having a truly uh, truly created IT hub where you can communicate with industry, already finding your potential uh, employers, and also being engaged in different uh, projects with industry. And I think uh, Olga will tell you also about this kind of things that uh, some of our uh, master programs also have so-called uh, so-called industrial projects. And lastly, scholarships. Again, uh, I won't try. Uh, I will try not to steal uh, uh, materials from uh, from Olga. But I'll just say, as a person who uh, who participated myself in studying abroad, that generally when you decide to study abroad, uh, it causes a lot of um, uh, it causes a lot of um, uh, spending and expenses. Uh, but uh, having a scholarship that uh, that uh, that covers all all tuition fee that is you know a quite good boost um, for 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 your for your desire to study abroad. So uh, that basically the the challenge that I wanted to give to, to give to you. And now I'm giving up to Olga. As I mentioned, she will tell you more about our programs, procedures, uh, admission procedures, and uh, educational grants. So uh, Olga, if you if you might. Hello everyone, my name is Olga and thank you Sergei for this, uh, this introduction. Uh, I'm pleased to see you all online. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, you are here for a good reason and I hope today you will get all necessary information. Uh, today we will have a brief review on what programs can you study, how do you apply uh, and how to get the scholarship and what it covers. So we will reply to all your uh, requests we see in the chat. Uh, my time is limited to about 20 minutes, so I will be glad to continue our communication later in um, chats and emails. Uh, so let's start. We will start with a bachelor program in computer science. And uh, as you see at the screen, uh -huh, can you see it well? All right. Um, First of all, I would like to point out that all of you have a chance to get 100% scholarship, which covers not only tuition fees, but also the monthly allowance. And we will come back to this later. Our bachelor program is designed to give students some basic and solid knowledge in IT. The program is uh, four years, and during the first two years, students take foundational courses in computer science. But what's interesting in the third year and in the fourth year students can choose and they choose between specific tracks software engineering data science and robotics regarding admission and scholarship criteria we are looking for candidates who are, who have good knowledge of mathematics of physics and programming and who knows at least one programming language Personal achievements are also considered, especially if you participated in national and international contests. For example, if you were or you are a member of your national team at International Olympiads in Informatics, Mathematics, Physics, and, um, and you can provide a certificate about this, it would be a huge advantage for you at the stage of application. And if you become a student, it will give you advanced monthly allowance, up to 700 US dollars, which is great. Uh, basically, the bachelor program is a good start for the further career development in IT. But let's proceed to master's program. Programs, <laughs> because we have four. And the first two programs uh, are special because uh, they require some professional experience. The first program, Master of Science in Information Technology and Software Engineering is a very intensive program and it lasts for two years. Some mandatory requirements are to have the work experience, which is more than one year, and a good knowledge of computer science and programming languages, at least one language. What's special about this program? As a part of their final assignment, students develop industrial projects in cooperation with the partner companies of the university. And we will tell you more about those partner companies at the end of our presentation. Um, another program, 
another problem, please, um, that requires work experience as well, is Master of Science in System and Network Engineering. Would you please look carefully at the slide and uh, read the text there? I will give some explanations. This master program was originally brought to our university from University of Amsterdam. Uh, you can see the requirements on the screen. Uh, what's important? This program is uh, also very intensive and the candidates should have work experience of more than one year. This is a very important point that knowledge of protocols and architecture of computer networks is uh, highly appreciated in your, in your CV, in your application. Another two master programs do not strictly require professional experience. Let's start with the Master of Science in Robotics. Again, the program doesn't require any work experience, so you can enter it having just bachelor degree. For candidates interested in this program, it is important to understand that um, what is robot and how robots are involved in industry. So it would be a plus in your application. It would also be a plus if you have participated in international robotics competitions, such as World Robotics Olympiad. And by the way, our university is an official trainer for our national team for this Olympiad. And the last but not least, Master of Science in Data Science. So you can see the description, the short description of the program on the screen and admission cr criteria are also there. Uh, I would like to point out um, that there is one big advantage for entering this program. Practical experience in the relevant field, if you have this, it would be an obvious advantage, as well as strong background in mathematics and programming. All right, we had a brief look at all our five programs. We have, we have one bachelor program and four master programs. And probably you have already chosen one program of your interest. What's convenient? The application process is almost the same for all five programs, and you can change your program choice during the process of application. So, for example, if you uh, change your mind or the committee advises you to change the program, it is possible, no worries. Uh, and what the most important for you to know, all students here in Annapolis study with 100% scholarship. This scholarship covers tuition fees and other study expenses. Plus, the students get monthly allowance, which varies from 200 US dollars to 700 US dollars, depending on program and academic performance. Of course, it is not easy to get selected for the scholarship and to become a student here, but it's rather possible. And the students from about 30 countries who study here right now are a good evidence for this. So, how to apply for the scholarship? You can see at the screen what are the steps of the application process. Um, I will give you some, some important notes. Uh, please note that your CV or portfolio, as we call it, uh, here you're expected to show your recent achievements related to mathematics, physics, programming, computer science, robotics, etc. If something is not documented, for example, you have, you have made a robot and you have no certificate for this, you can include in your CV a screenshot or a picture of your code, website, app interface, or this robot, etc. So the purpose of CV is to show us what can you do, what have you done. What are you interested in and what are you good at? It is also important that you don't necessarily have to pass IELTS or TOEFL. We have seen this question about language requirements and uh, please be attentive here. Uh, we don't require IELTS or TOEFL certificates because we have our, our own entrance English test and it is free of charge and it's for everyone who, who applies for our programs. But if you already have the IELTS or TOEFL certificate, please show it in your application. It would be considered by the committee and it's a good part of your application. Well, what's next? Uh, some candidates worry about taking the interview with professor, which is uh, the next step. Uh, 
and we all can understand why it's so stressful and uh, why it worries everybody. Uh, here we have some tips for you to be more uh -huh, uh, to be more prepared. The first tip is to be ready to discuss all your personal details and background from your application. And the second tip is to study the information about the programs before the interview and prepare some precise and detailed questions for the professor. So the common mistake is to ask professor, oh, okay, would you please tell me in general about your programs? And the uh, professor sees that the candidate is not prepared at all and he, he or she has to start from, from scratch, um, like explaining the basics and uh, uh, spending the time of your interview, which is precious. Um, so those are the tips. I hope they are useful for you. Uh, please be aware that each after each step of for your participation in this application process, you will receive our decision, which can be either declined or passed. Uh, and you will see all the changes on your online application page, in your mm -hmm. in your application profile. And also, you will receive some notification from us via email. All right. So, there are three ways of decision you may receive. Um, after you have completed all the steps, there are three ways of decision. The first one and the best one is uh, if you are granted with a scholarship, with a 100% scholarship. The second way is uh, to to get a decision about being at the wait list or partial scholarship. And the worst one is a rejection. In case you have a grant, you have a scholarship, you will have to make your decision as soon as possible and start preparing your study and visa documents. And those who are in the wait list may be offered some partial scholarship or probably rejected on the final decision. And if someone is rejected, he or she cannot participate in the competition again this year, only next year. All right. Uh, you have also asked us uh, when... Well, okay. Uh, you have also asked us about the application deadlines. So we accept applications already from November, and we will do it till May 2018. Please note that you don't have to postpone it to the last moment. And early application is highly recommended because the application process will take about one month. And once you're offered a scholarship, you will have to prepare a visa and enrollment documents, which may take another two, three months. Well, we all hope for the best and we, will, uh, we hope that you will have enough time for all those actions and you will get only positive replies from us. So to sum up, there are some strong reasons to apply to Annapolis University. They are all displayed at your screen, but those are general. To make it more personal, you may check uh, the list of university teaching staff. Sergey told you about our teaching staff. Um, you will find out are there any professors from your country, and probably, if there are some, it would make you more confident. Also, you can estimate your expenses for coming to Russia and staying here. Now you know that the scholarship covers all your study expenses. Plus, you will get the monthly allowance, which is more than enough for your daily expenses. Regarding the language, you only have to know English and know it well. Later, when you become a student, you will have a chance to study some Russian, if you wish. Another reason is that 100% of the graduates are employed. Where do they work? Sergey will tell you. So thank you, Olga, uh, uh, for your informative uh, slides. Uh, and again, uh, I mentioned that we are strongly bound with the uh, IT industry because we are private university and basically we are surviving on three main sources. One of the, one of each is uh, our partnerships and our our partners, and we don't have any federal budget whatsoever. 
and uh, we're trying to promote cooperation with uh, with uh, different companies, uh, and they all represent different IT uh, IT domains, starting from I don't know uh, communication, uh, fintech, robotics, security, uh, software development, and basically on the screen you can see the uh, uh, your potential employers after you graduating. We are quite closely bound with the companies as I mentioned, and during the studies you all will have obligatory uh, internships, and you may may choose to spend them in these companies, this pool of companies uh, during the summer. Um, we also have so-called uh, industrial projects during master uh, master program. So basically, for uh, for some time during your master degree, you will also have a chance to work for industry and uh, prepare some kind of uh, product uh, for them, and uh, already maybe to acquaint with your potential uh, employer. And uh, also, we have so-called career development center that eventually, uh, in the end of your study, helps you to uh, to be employed, uh, conduct different um, career fairs and basically set interviews for you and help you as much as possible to uh, to be employed. So that's what about employment afterwards. And uh, I think the companies, are, they're not obviously all here. Here the main, um, mainly the companies that are, uh, that are founding us, uh, but not, not all of our partners. So uh, now... Uh, before we move into the question, I just say that we will send you all the materials, including the uh, the presentation. And uh, now I think we can move to questions. So please, if you have any questions, just uh, just ask us and uh, write either to the chat box or to the question box, and we'll be delighted to uh, to answer these questions. So uh, yeah.